You would think because there were many and they were touching Jesus, something would happen to them. Absolutely nothing was happening to them. No. Hallelujah. The title of my teaching tonight is Who Touched Me? Who Touched Me? Luke chapter 8 from verse 41 to 48. We are discussing destiny defining encounters, encounters that transform. Follow carefully as we draw light and wisdom from this scripture. And behold, there came a man named Jarius. And the Bible says he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one only daughter, above 12 years of age. And she lay a dying, but as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman, part of the story now, a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. She came behind him and touched the border or the helm of his garment and immediately the issue of blood stanched. It stopped, ended. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitudes throng thee and press thee and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody had touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. 48. Final verse now. And he said unto her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. Final instruction, go in peace. Give us wisdom and understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Bible tells us that the things that are written aforetime, it says they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Everything that is written, the Bible says, aforetime, inspired by the Spirit, that it was written, captured, documented, so that the saints can learn God, the saints can learn the ways of God. They can learn the principles of the kingdom, hidden through stories, hidden through parables, hidden through events, hidden through the lives of people, are uh, principles of the kingdom that can help the saints to know God, to understand his ways. Are we together? To draw light from those stories. And then to walk in victory. And this is one of such profound renditions. So we'll see what we can draw from this tonight. As it concerns having encounters. And as it prepares us to become great vessels. Even for the use of the master. Number one. Men can touch God. Men can touch God. In a way that radically changes the course of their destinies for good. This is the first thing I want you to know. Men, as mortal, as frail as we are, the Bible shows us from this story among others that men can touch God and touch him in a way that radically changes the course of their destinies for good. Hallelujah. Ordinary men, weak men, frail men, sometimes uneducated men, sometimes men who have come from dangerous grounds the bible says men can touch god and that men can touch god in a way that can radically transform their lives transform their ministries transform their destinies a man can have a destiny defining encounter a man can have a life altering encounter when he touches god whether you look at abraham in the bible or Isaac, or Jacob, or Moses, or Isaiah, or Gideon, 
or David or Solomon or the apostles that were mentored directly by Jesus or blind Bartimeo, one of these men who made up his mind, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. The Bible says they shot the man and said, don't disturb Jesus. Jesus was passing Jericho for the last and final time. And the Bible says the man refused to keep quiet. He shouted and he touched Jesus so much. Jesus stopped. And he attended to blind Bartimaeus, and that was where he received his sight. How about Nicodemus in John chapter 3? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And even though a controversial Pharisee, he began to engage Jesus in an intelligent discussion. And Jesus, seeing the purity of his motive, began to respond to him. And it was that discussion between two of them that eventually led to John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world. It was not a sermon he was giving in a synagogue. It began as a discussion between Jesus and a man whose heart was determined to touch God. How about Paul the Apostle? A Pharisee of Pharisees. Received a mandate to go and destroy the program of God. And on his way to Damascus, a light came upon him. And that radically transformed him. Hallelujah. So the Bible is full of men and women who touched God in various regards. And for every one of these names aforementioned, the Bible tells us and leaves us with this note that their lives were not the same. Abraham was changed to Abraham. Remember? Isaac, Jacob changed to Israel. Moses became not just one who was to be a prince in Egypt, but became a prophet and a deliverer. Isaiah in chapter 6, when he encountered God, he was mandated and empowered again, even though a genuine prophet, to now represent the purposes of God. Weak Gideon, least in his father's house, least of the tribes, became a mighty warrior. David, the man after God's heart. No one else in the Bible had that title. How about Solomon? encountered the wisdom of God and his life changed, became one of the wisest kings. The apostles, fruits of Jesus' own apostleship, as weak and frail as they were, most of them became mighty men, including Thomas and Peter. And then of course you know Paul, later became the mighty apostle who wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament as recorded. Now, I want you to pay attention, please. We have established the fact that men can touch God. That as mighty, invisible, and in many instances, mysterious as God is, it is possible that men can touch him. But just to bring us to speed with our understanding, what does it mean to touch? What does it mean to touch God? I don't want to assume that we understand that. So I decided to write a, a, a thing or two about that expression, that word touch. To touch means to come in contact with. First definition. To touch means to come in contact with. Number two. To touch means to connect to. Let me repeat myself again so you can write. To touch means to come in contact with. Secondly. To touch means to connect to. The third definition is very beautiful. To touch means to produce feelings of affection and empathy. To produce feelings of affection and empathy. One last time. To touch means to come in contact with. Proximity enough to make contact. Number two. To touch means to connect to. Finally, to touch means to produce in the individual feelings of affection and empathy. And I want us to walk with the third definition as we explore this subject. So when the Bible talks about touching or touching Jesus, it is an attempt to describe something a man can do that can produce within him, being a man, the feelings of affection and sympathy and empathy. Are we together? Men 
can touch God and touch him in a way that radically alters their life, the course of their destinies for good. The second point I want you to note tonight is that from this story, the multitudes had access and they had proximity. They even touched Jesus. They made contact with him without any evident transformation. Please give us that scripture. Luke chapter 8, now verse 45, I believe. The multitudes. Now watch this. And Jesus said, who touched me? When they denied, Peter and all they that were with him said, Master, the multitudes. Can you give us New King James? So that we just escape some of these words, these old English expressions. Oh dear. Can we find another version? NIV. Let's try it. For the purpose of our explanation. NIV. Beautiful. Okay. Now he says, who touched me? Jesus asked, and when they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. Beautiful expressions. Crowding and pressing against you. You would think because there were many and they were touching Jesus, something would happen to them. Absolutely nothing was happening to them. Now, when you want to touch a man, the first thing you need is proximity to that man. Am I right? And when you get there, you reach. Either by speaking, by stretching your hands. And all the people were doing exactly that. Yet, it did not touch Jesus. The multitudes had access. The multitudes had proximity. They even made contact with Jesus. Not the fake Jesus. The real Jesus. And yet there was no evident transformation in their lives. My goodness. So you can do correct activities. Physical contact with Jesus. Religiosity and correct activities does not equal having an encounter that produces transformation. From a physical standpoint, everything the people did was right. That is exactly what it takes to touch a man. Yet there was no evident transformation and Jesus did not even bear record that they were touching him. The multitudes had access. There are many people today who have access to church. They have access to the ministry of prayer. They have access to Bibles. They have access to teachings. Watch this now. There are many people who have access to fasting programs. There are many people who have access to powerful worship. There are many people who have access to apostolic teaching, pastoral, evangelical, prophetic platforms. That is like having proximity. Coming so close and even reaching. How many tapes do we have in our homes? How many books do we have in our homes? Written by great men, veterans of the gospel. Hallelujah. How many Bibles do we have? Concordances, all kinds of commentaries and references. The Bible in its variety, not to talk of e-versions that can afford you hundreds of different versions. But there are many believers with this increasing spiritual activity, the corresponding evident transformation that attests to the fact that you are meeting the God of the Bible is missing and absent in many lives. Who touched me? How do you single a person in the midst of a crowd? Who? One person touched me in the midst of a crowd. Just because multitudes are coming to church does not mean they are touching him. Just because many are involved in ministry does not mean they are touching him. Just because many are involved in spirituality in all its ramifications. Listen, if you were to mark those multitudes and those crowds, I hope you know the same thing they did was the same thing the man who was crippled did. And Jesus called what that man did, faith. They tore the roof and tried to reach Jesus and the man was healed. But in this instance, the crowd were pressing more so, they, I believe they were talking or saying something. And yet, in the mind of Jesus, nobody was really making any profitable contact with him. Could this be why many times we pray sincerely and the power that should follow prayer does not speak in our lives? Could it be that this may be why sometimes we study scripture? Sincerely so. 
but the light, the illumination and the wisdom that should proceed from contact with the word is not evident in our lives. The Bible says ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Could this be why we fast? Could this be why we attend church sincerely, but the corresponding transformation, are we together now, that attests to the fact, because you see, for Jesus to say, who touched me like you'll be learning, there are evidences, something happened to him. This one, he was not given a word of knowledge. Something happened to him, spiritually and physically. He felt it as an evidence that he was touched.